Hi, this is Barbara Burnett of Robinson Burnett Tax Consultants. We are located in Bountiful, Utah and in Loveland, Colorado. However, I work a lot with doTERRA wellness advocates all over the United States and we thought that this would be a good opportunity to talk about some small business tax and bookkeeping essentials um, when it comes to Robert putting things on the Essential Fives Team website. So we're going to start with small business tax and bookkeeping essentials and the first thing we're going to cover are examples of business expenses. The reason that I'm selecting these particular examples is because sometimes people get confused about these um, deductions that they can take. There's a lot of questions that come from um, the doTERRA consultants and so I thought maybe we could answer for you. The first one I'm going to start with is office supplies and gifts. And you might wonder, why is this one so complicated? But it's not that it's complicated, it just has certain IRS regulations to it. Now, of course, you're going to say, I know what an office supply is. It's, you know, pens, papers, laser, um, you know, cartridges, you know, all those things that go with office supplies. But sometimes um, when when you buy a gift uh, for, you know, either a um, one of your colleagues or one of your downlines or recruit, then you might be taking it out of your office supplies. Let's say that you bought some nice pens or something and you want to give those as gifts. So you don't know which one is an office supply and which one is a gift. Well, whenever you're providing any kind of intention of gifting, then the IRS regulations say that that gift is limited to a $25 deduction. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, I had a client who was so excited because he had given his um, recruit team, recruited team, um, some nice watches. And he didn't think that was any big deal. Um, he bought them, you know, um, when he was at, you know, some office supply store somewhere and thought, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and get these as gifts. Well, it ended up that the watches were $60. So he thought, oh, okay, fine, I can just run it through as an office supply. When actually, anytime you give a gift to a client or a customer, that deduction is limited to $25 per recipient. And by the way, a recipient includes a husband and wife. So him being all excited, thinking this was going to be, you know, not a big deal, and he thought, oh, I'll just switch it from office supplies into gifts, was not the way it was treated. We had to include only a deduction of $25 per watch. So you need to think about that. If you're giving gift cards, gift certificates, whatever, to customers, make sure that the increments are all, only in $25 um, gift card so that you can stay in line with the IRS code. Now, let's say that you say, I don't really care, Barb. Um, I'm still going to you know, go ahead and, and buy a $60 watch for my customers, or I'm going to buy a $40 aroma um, diffuser, whatever, and that's just the way it is, then <clears throat> we can most certainly do that. Just know that you can only deduct $25. The rest is actually would be considered um, part of your net income. In other words, it's not a deduction. Okay, let's go to cell phone plan. The uh, reason that this is always a big question is um, people say, okay, well, you know, I use it for personal and for business. So the, the key here is to always keep track and, and basically just get a gut feeling of how much cell phone you're using for business and personal. So let's say that your, your bill is $120 a month and you know what, guaranteed you're using it 90% for your doTERRA business. Then you know what, deduct 90% of that monthly uh, cell phone plan on your tax return. The iPad, iPhone, and laptops, that's pretty, um, that's a pretty common thing that people are doing now. Um, there are several ways to take those deductions. Most of them can just be expensed uh, directly. 
But let's say that you have a computer that you've used in the past and now you're using it for your small business. What you can do is you can still take that deduction, but it has to be depreciated over three to five years, depending on the asset, um, versus if you would have purchased that iPad, iPhone, laptop, or desktop brand new. Um, uniforms is always a question because a lot of doTERRA wellness advocates say, hey, I just bought a new tie or a new shirt or a new dress for one of my doTERRA team building meetings. And they always think that that is a deduction. The problem is, unless it has your company logo or the words doTERRA written across, you know, even if it's the sleeve or um, the neck part of the shirt, um, you cannot deduct that clothing. The IRS does not allow that deduction if it's ordinary, um, you know, attire that you would wear anywhere. Now, if your team is all wearing the same shirts and it has the doTERRA logo or it has your company logo and then some khakis and that's required in the uniform, then those khakis would also be a deduction. Uh, home office expense are the expenses that are um, attributed to having a home office. Um, and I highly encourage all small companies, all small business owners to have an in-home office, especially if they don't have one outside of their home, because that means that they can deduct their uh, utilities, their internet, and even depreciate some of the home. Um, any paint, window treatments, repairs, electrical wiring, anything that's in that home office space can be 100% deductible. The other nice thing about having a home office is the minute you drive out of your driveway to attend a meeting, convention, drive to the airport, deliver customer goods to go purchase, whatever, those miles all become deductible. If you don't have an in-home office, then only the miles between where you're going, like, so let's say you run to Best Buy, and then you run over to your customers and deliver, deliver purchases or whatever. The first stop is not deductible, but the second stop is deductible. So it makes it a little more difficult when you have to keep track of the in-between trips rather than the round trip. Airfare and hotel, that sounds pretty logical, right? When you're going on convention or, you know, wherever you may have to travel um, overnight. Um, that is deductible. And if you bring along um, a bona fide employee or a bona fide part of your team, their expenses are also deductible. So let me give you an example. Let's say that um, you and your wife are going to the convention, you're both, or you and your husband, and you're both active in your small business, but then you also take along your office manager, or let's say you have um, your accountant, which would be me, and you say, hey, Barb, we want you to come and learn more about our small business. Then all three of our travel and hotel expenses would be deductible as long as the business, as long as the trip was for business purposes. Um, the fee for setting up an LLC or an S corporation, which I encourage all small businesses to do, especially to set up an LLC because that gives you liability protection, is a write-off. Um, any product purchases and samples that you buy and give to customers or um, use to sell, whatever, those are all also a deduction or part of inventory. Um, storage units, a storage unit, if it's used primarily for business, is a deduction. Let's say that you purchase a small uh, shed type storage unit that you put in your backyard and you primarily uh, or 100% use that um, space for um, tools, uh, banners, uh, whatever, that storage unit is deductible. Mileage, um, actual versus allowance, um, the actual is always a little bit trickier because you have to keep track of all things that you um, purchase for your vehicle. Um, typically, the best one to use is the mileage allowance. It's allow The allowance this year is 56 and a half cents per mile. And it kind of gives you less of a responsibility because um, the only thing you have to keep track of really is mileage. You don't have to keep track of the receipts. Team building meetings are an important item because if you rent, um, 
like a lot of people go and rent a movie theater just for a Christmas party or your team building meeting. If you accept a conference room or a conference building hotel room, that facility rent is not deductible. And a lot of people think that that's going to be, you know, an immediate write-off. That's not true. The IRS regs say no, no entertainment facilities are deductible unless they're a conference room situation. But then if you go ahead and buy tickets for your uh, team or provide food, those are deductible. It's just the facility, the entertainment facility is not a deduction. Um, tolls, parking, and taxi, they're all 100% deductible. Um, this is where I kind of want to throw something in. Let's say that you lose your taxi receipt and it was for $55. The IRS allows any kind of business deduction to um, be eligible for a write-off if you don't have a receipt if the purchase is under $75. So if for some reason you lose any of these um, any of these receipts on anything that we've talked about, as long as it's under $75 and it's either written down in a log or you can find it on your bank statement, on your credit card statement, and it's under $75, the, the IRS does allow um, that deduction. All all tax preparation fees when it comes to your business are absolutely uh, deductible and we're hoping that you will ask us to help you prepare those tax returns every year. Um, Mills, actual versus pure diem, um, there again, if it's under $75 and it's logged, you can take that meal deduction. Typically a better way is to um, write down where you've been, your location, the city and the state because the IRS um, has what's called per diem rates. So there's high and low per diem rates depending on where you are. If you're in Boise, Idaho, you might only get a per diem rate uh, for meals of like $43 a day that you can take without receipts. If you're in San Diego, they allow up to like, let's say $70. And so you can take that as a per diem. Now just remember that all meals are 50% deductible. So even though I'm telling you per diem rates that, you know, these different high low locations might be $43 or $70, when it comes to your tax return, 50% are disallowed. Now, if you're having a team building meeting and you're including the public, so let's say you say, okay, team, I want you to invite anyone you can. This is, you know, an important meeting. We're trying to build the team and the public's invited. Then that meal and any food that you provide is 100% deductible versus the 50% deductible when you're just providing team dinners. I hope you've enjoyed this part of our webinar and um, we're looking forward to you moving on to the next section.